You're joining the Dr. Business Podcast with Dr. Holland Meyer, where we talk business sprinkled with a bit of Jesus. Our goal is to help you simplify business, impact more lives, and increase your profitability. By sharing the stories of influential doctors from various specialties, we help you get creative in connecting with your target market, increasing your exposure in the community, and collaborating with local providers so you can reach more people and avoid burnout. Thanks for tuning in, and we're excited to help you navigate success in your doctor business. And now your host, Dr. Holland Meyer. All right. Welcome back, guys. I'm Dr. Holland Meyer, along with Dr. Brett Brimhall. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, Super excited to do this. Thanks for inviting me. You bet. Now, I just love this dude. I have to start out by saying that because he is so down to earth and he just loves helping people and connect with them and help them to think and learn what it is to feel good. He is first and foremost a family man. Married to his wife, Holly, for 23 years and has four kids from the ages of 12 to 20. He has been in practice for 19 years and has been training healthcare providers all over the world since 1995. And him and his father have pioneered a program called Six Steps to Wellness. And something else I want to kind of dig into a little bit as well is in 2014, he had a paradigm shift with apparently some really cool breakthrough technology with some results he saw in his patients. Um, He's on the advisory board for that company and loves to share the life-changing science and opportunity with the world. So, Brett, if you can kind of fill in the gaps for us, who is Dr. Brimhall, not only as a doctor and a businessman, but as a human being? Well, actually, I appreciate you uh, inviting me to this, and it's, I actually love that question because behind every individual is a story. Yeah. Um, and usually those stories start with different pains, right? Um, so. Uh, so my dad was raided by a contractor. So we grew up with this phrase, I'm, I'm going to work you so hard, all you can think about is school. And so my dad actually was going to be a dentist. He got injured, um, carried into a chiropractor's office. The chiropractor got him back functioning again. Um, and the chiropractor told my dad, you owe it to the world to do for others what was done for you. So that was the beginning of our journey in the chiropractic arena. Um, and then obviously as chiropractors and business people, we started that journey and most of our greatest lessons were learned through pain. Um, so I began my practice. I, when I, when I graduated high school, I started a mission for two years, um, came back, um, knew I wanted to be involved in helping people um, physically. And I love teaching people emotionally and spiritually. I just, I enjoyed that aspect. So, um, that was, it felt like a natural fit. I just wanted to have chiropractic in my life cause I just knew growing up, man, if I felt bad or was stressed, I could get adjusted. And that's why I wanted that for my family. Right. And that dove me into where I eventually attended Parker, where you went. And, and then uh, just my journey's gone on since then. I started teaching with my dad in 95 because he was formulating supplements for multiple companies. And so we started teaching and training physicians on it, what, we, what was eventually developed into what we call the six steps to wellness, which is literally working with the whole person. And so since 95, um, I started teaching and training with him. And he used to joke with this. He'd he call us students that taught with him the paramecium. He said, well, the paramecium can do them. Do what you guys can do. Um, and so that, and I finished school um, at Parker, came back to Arizona. I've been practicing ever since. Um, have four, had one child when we were there in Parker. Uh, she just went and had breakfast with him before this. And he's now 20. Um, wow. In college himself, trying to decide what his next step is. Uh, and just thinking how lucky I am as a dad to be able to like, you know, I don't have to work on a Friday, right? I can go have breakfast with my son and then schedule my time to do this type of thing because of the different choices that we've made in business, but to also get to do what I love, which is really help people. And it's, that's kind of the core foundation for me, um, is I want to help people. Like I want to help people physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And as a clinician, I get to do all three. Mm-hmm. And, as a, and a business owner, you know, so I guess me as a person is come down to like, I just want to help people. I'm very involved in my church group. I work with the young men in our church group. And this last week they came to my office and I exposed them to what is health and what is chiropractic. And I also just told my guys, whatever you choose to do as a profession, like find something you love and enjoy because right. you're going to do it a lot. Um, you can make them money a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. And it was just fun to, to feel like you can impact those minds. And um, so me as a person, like, for most, I mean, I love God. I love what I do as a as a father, a husband. Um, 
I work because I get to and because I want to take care of my family and I really love seeing people get it. Like there's nothing more fun to me than seeing somebody's eyes light up or they have hope or assurance or, you know, something, whether it's physically or emotionally. So that's kind of a nutshell of me. We have like four kids, youngest is 12, uh, three boys and a girl. My daughter's 15 um, and a dancer and my other boys got two, one getting ready to graduate high school and one that's in uh, sixth grade and busy life. But you uh, definitely have a busy life to say the least. And you keep adding new things on uh, to kind of what you do. And I love, by the way, just a side note, it's really endearing to see you do your Facebook lives with your dad. <laughs> it's so cute. I absolutely that, love that. that. Funny. <laughs> so getting back to your style of practice, um, how did you create and develop your vision for the focus and the style of your practice? I know you probably hit on it quite a bit because you kind of have that history leading up to where you are today. But if you could share a few tips with some of our listeners that, that might be uh, struggling to find that focus or that clarity and that vision. Yeah, I appreciate you asking that question. So, so it just started with somebody else. So my dad was told by a chiropractor, hey, you need to help others, help, help others how you were helped. And so he began chiropractic. He literally went and shadowed different clinicians to try to learn from them. Mm -hmm. And so he started starting cranial work early on. And right after school, my brother, my oldest brother, who was born with, in a hospital with forceps, he started having seizures. So he started starting cranial work. So that became part of what my dad learned. My dad, one of the, one of the clinicians in our area here, called him a pathogenic learner, which means he's kind of learning from everybody. Yeah. And so, and then he, so we kind of began our journey in applied kinesiology. So Dr. George Goodhart was one of my father's mentors. And so we learned about that triangle, the whole idea of physical, emotional, and biochemical. And so pretty soon my dad, he had a patient came in with migraines. He was able to help her, but not the next one. And so he started studying nutrition and was able to help that one. And then another one came in and he couldn't help them with nutrition and chiropractic. So he started studying emotional work and was able to help her. And so what happened over this morphology of years of practice we realized, hey, there are physical reasons why people struggle. You know, we yeah. talked about, you know, you know, our founder, right? Trauma, toxicity, and auto-suggestion, right? So that just kind of morphed into six steps where, yeah, there's physical, emotional, biochemical, but the of those are also toxicities, allergies, and electromagnetic influences that we had to address. And that's what came into the six steps to wellness was how do we apply the different tools, technique, and strategies, products even, into an ability to tap into each opportunity the person has to improve themselves. And that's what eventually drove into six months. I remember I was in Parker actually at the Tar of Time, and my dad was kind of, he had all this big, all this information, and my wife and I kind of put it together in a manual, right? Um, to try to just help make what we are doing consistent, because that's one of the challenges. We got all these clinicians that are, have phenomenal results and, and information, but they just practice by themselves. And I, I found myself with my dad working with him. I'd worked with him since I was 15. And I, he'd do something. So why did you do that? And he's like, because they needed it. I said, okay, <laughs> I, 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 they probably did, right? But why did you do it? Like what, got, what thought press got you there? And I think that for me, that's one of my gifts or talents that I think God put on me. He's like, you know, to help me see why somebody doesn't try to get people that thought process. So the reality is, is I think our... Our challenges are, are, you know, really what get us to where we need to be. That the book called "The Obstacle of the Way" talks a lot about that. And so, for my dad, it was that way. There was just people we weren't weren't doing well with, even with genetic testing we got into. My mom developed cancer, and you know, we didn't see it until it was stage four, right? So we, you know, people ask me, "Well, did what you do doesn't work?" I said, "No, I know it works. We helped a lot of people, but there were just things that we did not know." Right. right. But yes. that took us on a whole other journey uh, to learn things, to be able to be where I am right now, to know the things that I do, hopefully help people differently. So it's never pain free. Right. Um, but if we can, but I've tried to use those difficulties as opportunities. And that's really how the six step develop, was developed and how it continues to evolve. Right. I love 
that your explanation isn't like it happened overnight, you know, because it kind of seems like it is from the outside looking in, right? But that's never how it happens. And um, kind of what some things I got from it was it's a group effort, never on your own. And I love that you guys, you and, and it's really endearing that your wife was part of this process too, as far as packaging it up, you know, getting it in a manual form. But I love that your dad never stopped learning. You know, and same with yourself as well. And no matter if you're in school, out of school, in practice already, like go visit more offices, you know, whether it's chiropractic or totally outside chiropractic, like keep visiting offices and see how they operate clinically, but also how they operate in business too. So thanks so much for sharing that with us. I actually like how you brought that up because literally this morning I was talking with my dad. He's been one of my mentors in chiropractic. Uh, for sure, but we have a patient that's not responding with everything we're doing. And in my head, I'm always thinking, who do I send them to? If it's not me, who? Yeah. And unfortunately, like the more you know, like you realize there's not a lot of people that have studied all the other stuff. But I, I reached out to him and said, hey, I got somebody, and he doesn't treat patients really anymore. Mm -hmm. But I said, look, I need to make an exception. I need you to see this girl. She's a young girl. I said, you need to, I need to see you, see what you see. Yeah. And see if there's anything else that we need to do. And I think, I learned it from my dad. He's always been one somebody that refers out to to try to get an insight or an expertise from somebody else. Um, and so I love that you did this. Kind of why I said yes is because I really think that that there are a lot of really gifted individuals, and we just how do we how do we gather them in? One of the groups I'm a part of is the mastermind group with a bunch of people that like there none of them. There's dentists, attorneys. Um, a pest guy he does pest control mm -hmm. um another guy he's in basically in the he's construction but in sales um and just a couple business guys in insurance and but the, the commonality is we all have struggles yeah we all have employees we all have people we all live in this same world but when you listen to that i, I the first time i went i realized i wasn't crazy like my story <laughs> wasn't unique every business professional has these challenges and but we but if, but I was an island for a long time, like you mentioned. We can be these island, and I thought it was me. I thought I was the failing. I was reading books, right, all that. But having that group to kind of realize and to bounce ideas off each other. Now, when one of us has something going on in our business world, we'll have a conversation, and everybody kind of fill in. It's been awesome, and that's I think awesome. that's something in the profession we need to do more. Yeah, and I love the collaboration that you can acquire from that and get totally different perspectives you know because business ends up being kind of like widgets right it's just a different service line or a different target market and how are you going to connect with those people well i'm going to switch gears a little bit what would you say is the best investment that you've made um in practice or in business for yourself you know as far as for me personally um it's always the you know the seminars and the books that I read, and then taking time away too. Like you know, especially if if you know, there've been times when my wife and I have been really really good, and we'd always go do things together and just be with each other. Yeah. And um, I think that's always been huge. The last five years I've been so busy, yet we haven't done that that much, and it definitely affects um, my creativity side of me. It's, it's going back to that space. I mean, Jesus did that, right? Like when he was stressed, what did he do? Like he literally he left the apostles several times and went another way. He went and took a nap on the boat, right? Mm -hmm. In the middle of a storm. Um, and so for me, part of that stepping away has always been a huge thing for me. Um, and then reading books um, has been a huge thing for me. Um, and then I have to admit, like, um, the challenges that I have. I mean, the, the challenges that I have. And then let being open to others help. <laughs> okay. That's, that's a tough right? one. That's a tough one to let others in and even know about whatever challenges you're having, but also to drop the ego and really reach out and listen to feedback. So I think those are huge. And a lot of times whenever we think of what's the best investment, it's a lot of times adding to. So I really value your uh, point in stepping away. <laughs> from practice or business to really get those creative juices flowing again and just really, I mean, dive into and nourishing other relationships that are vitally important to your success in your life as well. So thanks. Well, that's interesting that, uh, so 
because as clinicians or just business owners, like we kind of, we have to bring the energy, right? right? We have to bring the energy to our staff, to our team, right? Got to perform. So who is it that brings it to you? And so even this, uh, this last week, uh, a guy is it really super successful in the business that I'm part of. And he said, look, why don't we go to a seminar together? And for me, I'm like, oh, man, like, he's going to find out how like lame I am. Oh. <laughs> right? This guy is super successful. Right. And I'm like, okay, but, but at the same time, like I want to rub shoulders with somebody like that. And because if you're the smartest person in the room, like if I am, then I'm not being pushed. And I learned that's probably one of the biggest lessons I've learned too. And so stepping into uncomfortableness for me like this, like, so I said to my wife, like, and she's super supportive like that. She said, you know what, go. And so I'm going to go and be with this, this individual for a few days. And I, I know, like, when I look at where he's at, as far as what he's created, yeah, he's light years ahead of me. And that's going to be so uncomfortable because I'm used to being the smart person in the room, right? But I'm like, okay, I want that, even though I don't want that, right? It's kind of one of those funny <laughs> scenarios. I think that would be, if you want to talk about growth, yeah. I think a lot of us, if you're not doing things that are uncomfortable, we're, pro we're probably not growing the way we could. Right. And I just want to say congratulations on saying yes. Because sometimes that's hard, but that's the very thing that we need to do to continue to learn and continue to grow. So congratulations. I look forward to hearing more about that on the, on the hindsight aspect. What would you say is the most successful failure that you've had? Or if you don't resonate with the word failure, what's a struggle that turned out to be a blessing for you in business? You know, I, it's funny that I've, Mike, I've had a lot of thoughts the last few months on failure and okay. cause I've, I don't, I haven't never really liked that word just because of just that era. I think we grew, I, we grew up in is this, the failure was bad, but I'm really learning to, sh to shape that, that mind because was Thomas Edison a failure? No. Did he fail a lot? Right. Right. So maybe it takes failures to get to success, right? And I think some of my greatest you know, mistakes, challenges, failures, right? Um, one of them, I really, my mom passing was, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, super tough, yeah. right? I mean, she's my rock. She is, I mean, my wife, she said, I like to say that she, your mom is a boy, said, <laughs> without a doubt. So, um, and so that was probably, um, one of the most difficult well, is the most difficult thing I've ever been through. Um, still miss her every day, right? Because she literally, but her her memory and what she sorry, I got a puppy bothering me here um, is really what led me to a lot of the decisions that I made um, the last ten years to do things differently, to see things differently, to hopefully spend different time with my kids, to have different conversations that I wouldn't have had, and. Mm -hmm. Um, so I say that as far as a failure that's been the probably the biggest catalyst for my growth, it was that um, continues to be right. Um, so I wouldn't wish that on anybody, but I've watched those failures either bury us or if we kind of turn them underneath us, they become fertilizer for growth. And in reality, what's fertilizer is just poop, right? <laughs> that's all it is. Yeah. And you can either have it on you or step in it and it makes you grow. And so I've, I've just chosen to, and there are moments I do good and there are moments that I don't. Um, but what I learned from that lesson with my mom was that I, it's one of the few times in my life I let somebody help me because I just feel like I needed to. And I, I learned that it's okay to let people help. Um, and as I look back at that experience, one of the things that comes to my mind again and again, I think about for me, you know, Jesus is tough. This one the toughest time was going to the Garden of Gethsemane. And who did he call on? He, he didn't want to do it. It was a super hard struggle. But he asked his closest buddies to watch and pray with him. Didn't wake him up once, but twice. Right. Right. So I thought over the years, do I reach out to my buddies or my friends and say, hey, guys, I'm struggling here. Um, and that, for me, was a tough, tough lesson when my mom passed to let people help, but they wanted to. Wow. And so that was probably one of my difficult, difficult time, but what I learned that and I, now I reach out much faster. Right. That's so powerful. And I just want to send my condolences to you, but I also uh, just want to say thank you for your be just for being real and raw and vulnerable and sharing that with us. Um, and I've found that whenever we're our most mm -hmm. authentic self, we can actually have the greatest impact at the same time. So I'm certain that, 
what you just said might be the most powerful component that might save someone's life or someone's business uh, throughout this podcast. So thank you so much for, for being real with us. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Um, so leading into some things you've already hit on, um, I know that, that uh, Jesus is big in your life, uh, just from our conversation so far. How would you say that your spiritual life has played a role in the business aspect of, of life? Well, I say when, I'm, when my spiritual life is in place, my business life always goes better. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and the same is true with my um, family life. So it's funny, I, yeah, yesterday I was sitting there, sitting, and this phrase can keep coming to my mind. It always has. It is, you know, seek first the kingdom of heaven and all things to be added to you, right? And I, I really, you know, to be honest, you know, the last couple of years, I probably have stepped more away from that than I ever have in my life, where I've just got busyness, maybe chasing the dollar more than, than chasing the, 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 the vision. Um, and I, I just, I mean, that's, a, that's an absolute reality. And because of that, I've had more fear about things than I needed to, right? And so as I look at that, um, excuse me, uh, that right there, just I keep coming to my mind, you know, seek, seek, you know, what are you seeking, right? right? What are you seeking? And so that was, uh, even yesterday, I just, again, reminded myself, where, what, what is my focus? What am I seeking? The same with patience um, or business. Like, why do we do what we do? Um, you know, why do we work, right? You know, and so that was, so spirituality for me, like when I'm in the right spot, um, the reality is one of the scriptures I like, it talks about that they, they're praying for, praying for deliverance. Like how often do we pray for deliverance? And the answer came as peace and assurance. So they didn't, didn't deliver, right? Right. But it came with peace and assurance. And for me, um, that comes back when I'm in a good spot spiritually, even if I'm in the middle of a struggle, um, and actually, when my mom passed, that was, I found myself in a place where I normally go to just ponder. And I just said, Hey, God, I just need you to know. I just need to know, are you, are you aware of me and my family? Wow. Like, I just, I said, I know this, I'm going to be okay. Um, this is horrible. It's tough. But are you aware of me and my kids? Um, and so that, for me, that spiritually gets me through those moments that just like you're just wondering, is, is it going to be okay? So, so when I'm in that spot, right, and unfortunately, I think sometimes I have to get in a, a bad spot to call anymore, but uh, I should do it yeah, all the time. Yeah, you know, I, th I think it's easy whenever we're in a bad spot to call out for help, or when we're in a good spot, not necessarily to spend quality time with God, but to just, like, give props to God, like, thanks, yes, thanks, 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 but not really have that intimate connection at the same time. Um, yep. But even when we're struggling and we're not in a very good spot, um, we can be grateful for times like that to bring us back to God too. And I love it, uh, that in the Bible, it does say God has not given us a spirit of fear. You hit on fear, right? Uh, and whenever we are apart from God, fear can step in, but instead he's given us a spirit of power and love. And whenever we are in that good spot and kind of take a moment and take time to just have prayer time, meditation, whatever you might call it, that, that we do get grounded and centered and, and we are in a better place. And like you said, oftentimes business, family, relationships follow where you're at in, in your spirituality too. Now I'm going to switch gears a bit um, and kind of uh, bring it back to business. And I want to get some uh, valuable concepts that some doctors listening in can start to implement. So in, a, in regards to connection, what are some ways or some techniques that you've been able to connect with your target market? You know, that's a great question. And so it's adapted with technology, right? I've always done, I did monthly seminars in my office for years on different health topics, right? Because that was a way to get people in front of me and, and have conversations in my office. I'm always talking. I don't like magazines. They don't, they don't, they don't, I don't like living in my office. So, cause I'm typically having conversations, not about the weather, about what's going on with them. That's just, it's always been part of it. With the advent of social media, I remember driving home one day, I'm, out, I'm watching people and like everybody's doing this. Like they've got these things and they're literally doing this. I'm like, oh, people are, this is how pe that's where their, their eyeballs are. So I got to be in front of them. And so that's when I started doing some of the social media stuff and doing some of the Facebook videos. And actually when the first time I did a Facebook live, it scared bejeebies out of me. I'm like talking to myself, right? And it's live. <laughs> you can't stop. It's, 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 it's out there. Right. Uh, 
so I think one thing I'd say do if you haven't got involved with someone in social media, whether that's Instagram or whether that's Facebook, is that so as I go throughout my week and I treat patients on Mondays and Wednesdays, I listen. Um, as the, you know, what are some of their needs? And all the time I'll hear somebody ask me a question. I don't have half an hour to talk to them about what it is that really would take. I say, you know what? And that's a great conversation. I'm going to write it right here on my whiteboard I keep in my room. And I said, I'll write it down. And I said, look, you know, I want you to watch out, watch this week. Cause I'll do a video on that for you. That's right? a great so, idea. That's a so great that, idea because a lot of times, First of all, Facebook lives are scary. Being in front of any kind of camera, then feel like you're talking to yourself. Visualize talking to somebody else on the other side is a great is a great little concept to kind of go get past that. But a lot of times people finally get in front of their phone and they're like, I don't have anything valuable to share. Like, I don't know what to talk about. So if you can write those topics and those questions down as you go, that's brilliant. And so you're sucking in your audience to follow you too. Yep. So that way they'll watch it and I'll, just, and I'll tag them in it. Like I'll say, hey, you know what? That's that one there. And then they'll share it with their friends and family, right? Yeah. Um, and so it's that, it's that same engagement that I'll do online that I'll do in, um, in my office. And the other key thing for that, in my opinion, is take something that excites you, right? Take something that excites you, right? And then involve somebody else, right? So if there's like that individual that like has a lot of passion, right, for something, you know, have, let them share their story with that. Like, that's why I did the other day with my dad at Facebook. I'm just trying to get him out there and doing this. And it's, we should, I mean, obviously we just have fun with it, but he's got 40 plus years of clinical experience in treating individuals and helping them. Right. I don't want his knowledge to stop helping people. Right. And so how do I draw that out of him? And that's why I love what you're doing here. You're drawing that out. So take that same concept of what Holland is doing here and saying, okay, how do we, draw the best out of other people and so although I'm sometimes grab one of my staff members that loves chiropractic right and i'd have them hop on with me That's um, awesome. but i love just thinking about what is it people are interested in um and then trying to do a video to that um and even instagram like little stories and posts but also be real with people like i know some of my favorite and most talked about comments are when like when i'm doing something with my dad or with one of my kids or just being like a real life thing so yeah. those are, that's one other thing I would think. Of. And then if you don't have a networking group with people, start one. Create it. Absolutely. And that kind of beats me to one of my other things about collaboration. The networking is so vital, whether it's chiropractors or people in your same specialty around you. Like it's, there's too many people around for it to be competition. I promise. Yeah. <laughs> but or outside of your profession, you know, really just create that group, whether it's paid or not, people that will commit and schedule a frequency that works for you, that people can be consistent at. And I think consistency is a common theme from collaboration, but also from even the social media posting that you're doing too. And to get in front of people, just get in front of people because that automatically creates an authority figure, right? So if you're speaking to people like you were in your office or on Facebook consistently, you automatically create an authority and credibility for yourself. So thanks so much. And kind of hitting on that too with exposure, how have you been successful in getting more exposure and becoming known and kind of the go-to doctor in your area? You know, a lot of that just is consistency. I, don't, I think that's that's the reality is consistently and listening for what people want and then also adapting right so it's, it's funny, like, like this conversation i had with my dad yesterday the other day he's like why do i gotta do that and i said okay because he has emails i said when you write an email you got a list of like fifty thousand people i said what's the open rate of that it's like five percent i said when you get a text message how often do you open that up I said, it's, it just is what it is. And it's consistency, right. consistency over time. Um, if some of you guys have not read a book called GoPro, it's a book about network marketing. You guys read it. Like I, I, I'd never been involved in network marketing until a few years ago. But if you, we would learn to communicate like effective network marketers, we'd learn how to network pe with people and we'd learn how to get our message out better. And that book right there is a short little book, but if you learn how to share your story and do that, it'll change our ability to, to impact people and listen for what they need 
and help them discover the answer the right way. Yeah, it is an easy read. I've read it a couple times. And the concepts in that book, whether you're in network marketing or not, like that's not really the point, but how to communicate and how to be consistent with that. And I love the fact that you keep saying, listen, 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 and ask the right questions too, so that they can arrive at the aha moment that they need instead of you talking at them as well. So awesome. Well, next I'm going to do kind of like a fire rapid round. Okay. This is whenever I'm going to ask you some questions and I want you to just kind of quickly give me some short answers, whatever comes to your mind. Okay. Okay. All right. In hindsight of being in business over the last 20 ish years, what are the top two areas of focus that you would tell other people to focus on in business or in practice? Always do some type of personal growth. Always. Mm -hmm. Right. Always work on you some. Um, The other one is being open to saying, do things that are uncomfortable. Okay. Like those are two things is is personal growth and something that you don't want to do. You go do it. I love it. Love it. Love it. Those two things. And then you'll, you'll go way faster. You will go way faster. That's true. Next question. What is the best advice that you've ever received? You know, it's actually advice from George Goodhart that I grew up here. Oh, I thought you were going to say your dad. Well, well, this is, I learned it from my dad through George Goodhart. And he told my dad years ago, catch on fire and people will come from miles around to watch you burn. Catch on fire and people will come from miles around to watch you burn. So if things are struggling in your life, it's probably because we've lost the fire, whether that's in our relationships or whether that's in our business. And that always comes to my mind. And then my dad taught me this again through another a practitioner, Dr. Fulford, he says, intention is an important technique. My dad would throw me in a room with somebody when I was just, before I was in, you know, I was in high school and just at, at half remission, and he'd say, go work with them. And he had this one lady, she had been chronic pain for years, he said, just you stay in there so she had a pain. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, I'm 21 years old, I just, I know how to do cranial. I just, I intended so much that she get better, she got better. Wow. I had no idea what I was doing. And so that's those two things for me, um, catch and fire people come miles, miles around to watch you burn and your intention is more important than your technique. That's gold right there. I love it. All right. Next question. What's one thing that you see consistently in every successful business owner? Failure. Failure. Okay. Yes. Every, I, I've never read a book or have been inspired by somebody that didn't have failure. Yeah. As somebody said, said, because of my failure, I'm relatable. And I think that as humans, we resonate with that. Uh, and so I think that's the one failure and getting up again. Those two awesome. things. The end of this podcast is going so strong. And I love that you're focusing on like, don't be afraid of failure. It's not a bad word. It doesn't define who you are. It's just a moment in time and to get out of your comfort zone. Now, this last question is more about giving back. What would you recommend? Um, what's the best resources that you resource that you've had for business? The best resource for me, um, I'd say book wise, or the book I love called "Claim Your Power" um, by Mastin Kip. If you haven't read that one, it's a phenomenal book. Uh, the book GoPro, just from a communication standpoint, um, is one of my favorites. Um, when it comes to clinical practice, you you need to step into the. If you want to come take one of our trainings, great, do that. But Find somebody you resonate with and want to be like and, and mirror match them um, for sure. As far as helping your brain, if you guys haven't heard of a technology called BrainTap, um, that's a way to start retraining those loops. Uh, one of my favorite tools that I use all the time to just retrain that subconscious mind. So that's a few shout outs. And then pr- make sure you're taking good nutrition. Yes. Right? Supplements, vitamin, mineral supplements, activators. Um, find somebody you trust, have a conversation because that is key in the world we live in. Um, that does matter in your success. Like a lot of us aren't paying attention to what we're putting in our bodies mentally and also physically, and it is a game changer for how you're going to perform. Awesome. I love it. I love it. And thank you so much for all your knowledge and content and value. I appreciate it, Brett. And well, how can folks get a hold of you? So you can get a hold of me one of two ways. Um, my, uh, you know, brimhall.com, that's my, that's my dad's webpage, but it can link onto me. Um, I'm pretty easy to find on, on, you know, on through whether whether it's Facebook Messenger, I'm on there all the time. Um, You know, so just drop me a line, tell me what you heard from me and love to meet you guys. Um, I love what you're doing, Dr. Holland. Like, uh, 
I'm just, I'm just glad you, because obviously this probably wasn't easy for you to start, and I don't want anybody to listen, but what you're doing matters, uh, and it's impacting people, so thank you uh, for doing that and helping us as individuals um, learn how to get out there and have conversations and connect and just to get the message out, because people don't know what we know, right, until we share it with them, and I'd love that you're drawing that out of different individuals and asking people, hey, who's somebody we got to get in front of, get people in front of, because we need people being louder with what they know so that people don't struggle as well. A hundred percent. This is going to help do just that. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. That's always great to hear. Thanks so much for your time and for the folks listening in. And thank you so much for tuning in and stay classy folks. Mm -hmm.